Hi, I'm Sharman from the Marriage Recovery Center, and I have some random thoughts today about authenticity and vulnerability. There are a ton of words in the English language that have layers of nuance and meaning, and I think that authenticity and vulnerability are a couple of those words. Depending on how you use them or how you're thinking about them, um, they can mean a couple of different things. Authenticity and vulnerability are often used in um, terms of leadership, leadership coaching, personal growth and development, and of course to talk about what's going on in relationships. That a lot of times um, they're talked about in negative terms like a scary thing. But to personally grow and to be an effective leader and to build deep relationships, you have to consider the elements of authenticity, which looks at what is real, what has substance, what can be built upon, what is not a facade that could slip away at any moment, and in the context of vulnerability, meaning if this is really out there, it is both the aspects of what is pure and raw, that vulnerability, but also that exposure. It is the fear of exposure. So vulnerable in the context that it is the real thing. There's nothing hiding it, nothing else around it, but also the exposure that that could mean something devastating. So you have to look at all of those nuances, but again, my hope is that we can talk about this in a way that you can begin to see that these are a strength, a benefit, counterintuitively can be used to deepen who you are and strengthen your relationships rather than be a bad thing. We often equate authenticity with vulnerability. To be real is to be exposed and therefore potentially unsafe. For example, you might believe that to share your real feelings or thoughts allows others to use them against you or to take them away, them meaning this piece of you, this part of you, your feelings or your thoughts, or to take them away by arguing you to death or demeaning or dismissing you or punishing you in some way because you are not conforming to them and their thinking. In actuality, someone rejecting you rejecting your authentic self, isn't destroying that self unless you give them the power to do so, but it is de destroying or diminishing or um, definitely making small, breaking something about the relationship. And there is a difference. Your identity isn't the identity of the relationship, even though we tend to connect the two of those things as well. The vulnerability in this case isn't you, it is the relationship, the depth of the relationship, not the sense of self. But we often disregard that distinction and internalize others' behavior as a definition of our personhood, which implies that we don't authentically know our own selves because we give others the power to decide and define us, to decide for us who we are, and then to define us by how they treat us. And then we hide our authentic selves because we can't handle the exposure that leaves us vulnerable to that broken connection. Again, the distinction being when we let um, the vulnerability be that we can't lose this relationship, for example, then we tend to minimize our own authenticity thinking that if we can hide, hide ourselves, we're actually holding on to something. To which I would say at the end of the day, that something you're holding on to is not deep. There might be some realness to it, but it will not be deep because you are not deeply known for who you truly are. I see a lot of men equate vulnerability with weakness, and I see a lot of women who tend to view it as exposure to harm, which I know kind of sounds like it's the same thing, that a weakness is also an exposure to harm. So essentially they are the same thing, but I think how we respond to them is a little bit different. The nuances are a little bit different. 
So when it is seen as a weakness, the reactive behavior tends to be aggressive, trying to prove their bravado, trying to be controlling. It's more aggressive because it's seen as a weakness. Whereas if it's seen as dangerous, you know, being vulnerable is exposing me to harm, then the reactive behavior tends to be regressive. So not instead of aggressive, it's regressive. It's shutting down, isolating, playing the victim, becoming more submissive, high anxiety, wondering what the outcome is going to be, but the fear-based um, perspective being that, you know, I'm exposed to something here, I have no footing. So it's, um, it's more regressive. The antidote for both is knowing oneself, which means who you are, who you are becoming, discerning what your feelings are, what you are feeling or thinking. So um, being introspective about what you're feeling and what you're thinking and what they are telling you, what you're thinking is telling you about what you need, where you want to place your steps, who you want to interact with, so that you do interact with people in a way that keeps you congruent with your sense of self, meaning you don't turn into a person that you can't stand or that isn't you because you're around this person just reacting to how they're treating you. And it makes room for them to be themselves, to be authentic themselves, meaning you don't internalize what they are saying or take offense to it as if it means something about you. It's them being them. Um, it doesn't have authority to define who you are, but then you navigate that with wise boundaries that you get to decide based on what you need to stay congruent to who you really are. Genuine authenticity requires coming out of hiding and being known, which is required for real, meaningful connection. In other words, you cannot deeply connect to a facade. If you're trying to present a facade and then expecting people to connect to that, even if you know you're living a facade and they don't, no matter how well you do it, you know you're not being real, which means you know you're not really being known for who you are. So even so, regardless of what they may know or believe, they are not deeply connected to you. You will feel very alone, even surrounded by people. You will feel very unknown. So unlo uh, alone and unknown translates to unloved, ultimately unloved, because to be loved means to be known. So that's something big to think about in this context of authenticity and the vulnerability that it exposes you to. Although I would say that being in love, being loved is vulnerable because there can be a lot of hurt in that as well. But when you learn to walk it out steadfastly, the potential for connection is huge. And this is why I say that authenticity, vulnerable authenticity, is our greatest strength. It is required for the attachment that our souls so deeply crave and were created for. The key is that you have to know yourself so that you can steadfastly show up authentically, and are not driven and tossed by the people around you, by what they think, by what they say of you. You just know who you are. What they try to use against you is much more clearly seen as that it breaks the relationship, not that it breaks you. When you are confident of who you are and who you are becoming, there will be a very different approach to how you take your next steps. So even if someone is responding to you poorly or treating you poorly, not making room for you, how you respond in that space is gonna be much more steadfast when you know who you are. You are better able to take action to either repair that relationship 
invite it to be different or put good boundaries into place so that you don't lose that sense of self. You don't lose your sense of direction of who you are and who you are becoming. You will be inviting people to go deeper. You will. When you put good boundaries into place and you are being authentic and steadfast, it does invite them to be different. But it also helps you to have better discernment about what level they're even currently offering to you. You can't make someone go deeper than what they're offering to you. You can invite them. Can't lead a horse to you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink type of thing. So you can invite them, but you also have to be discerning about what they're offering to you because that is the authenticity of the relationship as well. It's at a real depth. You will respond to that differently. You will invite them differently. You will be better able to connect because now you're letting your sense of direction be who you are, not who they tell you you have to be. You won't get pulled off course. I do recognize that the greatest fear in stepping into authentic living is knowing the upheaval of this to your current relationships. Like if you've spent your entire life building a facade that is just a shallow sense of who you are, thinking about going more deeply is uh, is going to create upheaval. People around you are going to feel unsettled because they didn't know this about you or it's just not the you they know. They might say it's not the real you, but I would just say it's not the you they know. And so that fear of creating upheaval and potentially creating a lot of fallout. There can be a lot of confusion and distrust, potentially permanently fractured relationships, maybe losses of whole networks of people like your church or extended family or friends that are uh, much more keen on staying inauthentic than they are relating more deeply, depending on where they are in their own life, their own maturity. The people around you will be challenged to have to um, evaluate their, their relationship with you and hopefully become a bit more introspective themselves about who they are. It's, it's always an opportunity for them to grow as well. The fallout may be traumatic. It may be. But the reward That reward of deeply connected, authentic relationships is exponentially more meaningful than the trauma of the fallout of the inauthentic facades that you may have with the people that um, that can't hang with you when you become real and authentic. So if these random thoughts today have inspired you, We would love to help you unpack what this might mean for you. You can call our client care team or check out our website at www.marriagerecoverycenter.com for more information about how we can untangle, sort out, and refocus the life you're trying to live. Thank you for taking a few moments of your time today to listen to me. I hope it has been encouraging. And until next time. Take care.